think.env files keep your secret safe? Well, think again. Attackers already know that's where your API keys, tokens, and credentials live. And right now, developers like you and me are being targeted by supply chain attacks, which have been increasing lately. The question isn't if you'll be attacked, it's whether your secrets will survive when it happens. But what exactly is happening? Just weeks ago, attackers slipped malicious code into popular NPM packages like TinyColor, NGX Bootstrap, and more. The newly released versions of them were built to steal developer secrets. We've seen maintainers' accounts get hijacked, malware hidden in trusted dependencies, and even AI-powered tools weaponized to grab credentials. Links to all this will be in the description below, by the way. So this is happening right now across projects like yours. If your secrets are still in a .env file, you're leaving yourself vulnerable. This is why moving to secrets management isn't optional anymore, it's critical. So how do you do it? All right, so here I created a demo project that's a typical example of what you might have for your environment. You have your editor open, you have some files that you might be working with to write your code. In this case, I'm doing a Node.js project using JavaScript. I have my package JSON that defined my scripts and dependencies and whatnot. And then I have an ENV file that has an API key in it set to a specific value that I need to use within my Node project. In this case, I'm just console logging it for the purposes of demonstration here. So some things to note about this. What happens is these attackers, whether it's a dependency from my package JSON that I've installed or an extension for my IDE, in this case, VS Code, they get access to this environment and therefore can read this ENV file and exfiltrate that so that they can use that data to their advantage. We want to stop that. Stop right there, criminal scum. Nobody breaks the law on my watch. Now, the way we can stop that is with better secret storage. And there are various options available to you for local development to remove the values at least out of this env file into somewhere more secure more difficult for attackers to get access to now this isn't a comprehensive list by any means but i wanted to bring at least a few to your attention so you can get started with trying these things out first up we have hashicorp vault which is a secrets management solution we also have doppler we have in physical <laughs> And believe it or not, one other option is password management solution, one password. So if you're already using that, you can potentially leverage this for your secrets management as well. All right, really quick, I'm going to show you running this project, npm start, and we can see it does print out the API key value just for demonstration purposes. So we're going to start off with the demo of the first solution or potential solution you might want to explore, and that is Doppler. Now with Doppler, you can sign up for a free account, start for free choose whatever login mechanism or sign up mechanism you'd like. I chose GitHub, for example, and that will bring you over to the dashboard. From here, if you click on projects, you can add a new project, give it a name. In this case, I created a demo one, and then you can create configurations within the different environments you might be using. We have development, staging, and also production, as you can see here. So I went and created one called Dev Personal, and in there I put in my API key, and the value of that, I'm, just, I'm showing that this is coming from Doppler. So once you have this all configured and set up, you can head back over to your IDE or your terminal, and you're gonna start using Doppler CLI from there. Flashbang warning. Uh, you'll need to install the Doppler CLI, and you can do that based on whatever operating system you might be using it within. In this case, there's Mac OS, you could use Brew. For Windows, you can use Winget, Scoop, or other options here like curling for it and that type of thing. So once you have that installed, you can start leveraging and setting up your account within the Doppler CLI. Double check we have Doppler, say version, there we go. And then you're gonna wanna run Doppler login. Now I've already done this, but to give you an idea of what's gonna happen, it's gonna give you the typical OAuth flow where you're gonna open up your browser and log in with your Doppler account. It's gonna give you a code to put in, and then you'll be all set to go from there. Once you're logged in, you're gonna run the command Doppler setup, tell it which project from the Doppler UI, the website that you set up before. So we're gonna use demo, call it Dev personal, and there we can see it has set up the project in that way. So now we can start using that project in Doppler from this project on our IDE uh, in the terminal here. Now we're gonna see the difference. If I run npm start normally, where it's using the EMV file to get the value of the API key, instead we're gonna run Doppler run and then whatever command we would normally use to run our project. So in this case, npm start you're gonna see that it actually injected the API key value for us that came from Doppler that we stored via the UI. 
Now, essentially what this is doing is it's removing the need for you to put these values and store them locally on your machine and storing them somewhere else in the cloud in Doppler's services. And you're only able to access them at runtime. You, they get injected at runtime when you try to run that project locally. But you might be thinking, well, that's just moving it somewhere else. If the attacker knows that you're using Doppler or recognizes that, then they'll just run some of the Doppler commands to get the values for those secrets and exfiltrate them. And you're right about that as well. However, there's a couple things to keep in mind here that help give you extra layers of security to defend against that. One is this is keeping it scoped to this project. Remember I ran Doppler setup, it scoped it to just this project and not anything else. So they won't have access to other projects that might be running or building on this machine and the secrets associated with those. Two, you can set up what's called service tokens that have a shorter time to live on them and are further scoped again to the project so that it's limited in access of what sensitive data they can retrieve from there. Speaking of the service tokens, if you go into the Doppler UI for that and you go to generate, it's under access within your project, you click on generate service token, you can name it, you give it only read access, you can give it an expiration as well. So each day maybe that you're doing development, you can limit to just that service token for that day and get a new one the next day. That way, even if that token is compromised, it's limited in time that it has availability for the attacker. And last but not least, all this can be audited and logged and you can quickly see what secrets were accessed and at what time they were accessed and wrote those keys essentially in the case that you might be attacked and compromised. One other thing to note with Doppler that you can do is limit the IP addresses that can have access to the secrets. So even if an attacker gets the values from your machine and they try to use them on their machines, they're not gonna be able to actually retrieve those from the Doppler service because of that. One other option I wanna show of the many options that are out there is one password that I mentioned before, because maybe you're already using that as a password manager and you can leverage the developer features there. So the way you can get started with that is one, you should create a separate vault outside of your other password. So you don't give access to the one password CLI tool for your other personal login information and other things that you might be storing within your account. Instead, you wanna limit it to the scope of your development purposes. So create a separate vault for that. Now, similar to other tools that are out there, like the Doppler one that I showed you, they have CLI capabilities in 1Password that enable you to inject the environment variables that you want, the passwords that you need into your process that you start running with. So to install the 1Password CLI, you can use Mac, Windows, Linux, go through the steps there that are pertaining to your operating system and log into your account from the command line. Then once you have that installed from the command line, double check that you have 1Password CLI, installed correctly by running OP version, and you'll see what version you have there. And then you'll be ready to start working with this as your secrets management tool for local development. So the behavior with using a tool for secrets management, like 1Password in this way, is slightly different than what we've seen with Doppler. Let me show you. Doppler is going to inject them from retrieving the service from the cloud to get the keys and values that you want based on the names of those keys. The way it works with 1Password depends on how you structured the storage in 1Password. As I mentioned earlier, you want to have a separate vault for your secrets for development purposes for each project. So instead of having API key equal the actual value, we're moving that value into 1Password. So the difference here is you're going to set the API key in your ENV file to a new value that follows a convention for the 1Password CLI to recognize. You start it off with OP, 1Password, colon slash slash, the name of the vault that you're trying to access, the name of the item in the vault that you want to access, and then the actual field name. So if you're familiar with 1Password, you can store username and password in there. That's what you're looking for, the, the actual field name in 1Password. So in this case, the password for this item, this login item, if you will, or API key, is under the password field in that vault. Once you have that set correctly, the way you inject this now into the process that's gonna run, in this case, the node application, is by using the 1Password CLI. Let me show you. So in order for this to work, you're gonna use OP run, kind of like Doppler run, but now we're gonna tell it where the ENV file is to use for matching the signature of our environment file variables, our secrets and variables that are in there. So we'd set it to that .env, and then we do the hyphen hyphen to say, this is now the command to run within the context of that, which is npm start. Now, before I hit enter on this, which I'm not gonna show you because then it's gonna start accessing my private 1Password account. This is the point where there's a second variation in terms of the behavior and approach with secrets management using this tool. It's going to prompt you to sign in with your 1Password main password that accesses everything 
in your account before it goes and finds the values for that environment variables that you want and injects them into the process for the running application. Personally, I like this because then even if an attacker gets access to my local environment and they see that I'm using 1Password, and if they try to run the 1Password CLI commands, I will notice that I'm being prompted to enter my main password for the account when I didn't initiate that in the first place. Or I might not even be there. It might be happening at a point in time when I'm not actually on the machine, thus preventing the attacker from actually getting access to the values of those secrets. Now, to give you an idea of what you can see happen, in this case, this little GIF here, it's running a different one to list the vaults. It prompts Wendy here, Wendy Appleseed, to enter their password for their 1Password account, and then it shows the values in the command line. What's also nice about this is if you have a machine with like fingerprint login or some other biometric quick login capabilities, you can leverage that. As you can see here, authorized with Touch ID, that makes it much faster, so you don't have to keep typing in your password over and over again while you're developing locally. So those were just two of the examples that are out there and options that you can go with for better secret storage and management for your projects. However, this was not a comprehensive list and I encourage you to look for the best options out there that fit your needs. Also, if you know of or find any other ones that I've not mentioned here, please let me know in the comments below. I wanna check them out. Hopefully at this point, you understand the risks around secret storage on your local machine like I learned and you feel encouraged to use a secrets management solution instead. These attacks are not showing signs of slowing down anytime soon. So the quicker you incorporate these into your workflow, the quicker you'll be at preventing further compromise to you and your company. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.